So we press that button. We go here. And then we go like this. That's not set right. We go over this page. And then we press this button. 60, 59, 58, this is a countdown. There we go. 57, the Slade and Mason 56, Show. 55, 54, this 53, continues to be a countdown to the Slade and Mason Show. 50, 49, 48, You're listening to the countdown to the Slade and Mason Show. 45, 44, 43. This is the continuing countdown. 41, the Slade and Mason 40, Show. 39, 38, right now. 37, You're listening 36, to the countdown. 35, the Slade and 34. Mason show. Freddie, let me know when the mic is open. Please stand by as you're listening to the countdown to the Slade 29, and Mason show. Oh, 27. Sorry, this 26, is of course the countdown to the Slade and Mason show. 23, 22. We continue 21, now with the countdown 20, to the Slade 19, and Mason show. 18, 17. Stand by 16, as we are 15, now delivering the countdown 14, to the Slade and Mason show. 12, 11. Yes. 10. This is our countdown 9, to the Slade 8, and Mason what? show. What? No, Six, I thought you turned the mic down when five, I asked at the microphone. Four, oh, we go. Sorry. Three, <clears throat> two, one. Now broadcaster from the Dan Mason Studios, deep in the heart of Virginia. It's the Slade and Mason Show. <laughs> I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this is the Slade and Mason Show. Well, good morning, everybody. This is the Slade and Mason Show. I am your host, Dan Mason. J.D. still out today. So let's get on Facebook and wish him the very best because that's where that goes. All right. Um, so good morning, good morning, good morning. Let me go ahead and read my little my disclaimer here. <clears throat> All right. Let me turn this up here. I can't hear myself. There, check one, two, check. Okay. All right. That's too loud. All right. This nope, that's good. All right. Thanks, Freddie. All right. So the Slade and Mason show. What is that? Well, <laughs> it, it's all about you, kind of. And but uh it's about us too. Well, mostly it's about us. Um it's like a radio program where we share with you news stories and things that we see throughout the week. Um typically it's just our take on it. Uh, basically we're saying the things you're thinking, but you would never ever here on the radio we're just having fun please don't take it too seriously just enjoy yourself it's just it's it's just an hour of of just kind of releasing and saying ah we're not gonna be talking about all that nasty stuff that you're seeing on the news nope 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 this is all light and fluffy and fun so that's the way that goes there now real important all the music you're listening to right now is brought to you by dano music and we do that because, first off, it's free. There you go. And you can go to danosongs.com, and you can uh, uh, look for music. So if you have some uh, uh, a podcast that you're looking to do, you can use his music. There are some that he just lays out there and goes, whatever, it's been used so much, have at it. And others that you can purchase. So he's got packages and things like that, so you can check that out. Um, speaking of checking things out, don't forget to go to Instagram and check out our picture from uh, 2016 <laughs> why does it sound so woody oh that thing got twisted over here sorry about that all right sound like this uh two o'clock in the morning six pack a day of cigarettes dj sorry i got that wrong setting there let me switch this here all right perfect um uh where was i going here oh yeah 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 so go to instagram and make sure you do this do you know it's it's one thing for you to discover the slade and mason show and then you sit on it. That sucks. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just come right out and say it. You need to share with people. You need to tell people, you know, like, hey, this is your one hour of release every Sunday, 10 a.m. Sharp. It's going to be a lot better than CNN, NBC, Fox, ABC, C I don't know who else is left anymore. Um, it, it's going to be a whole lot better because everything they talk about is doom and gloom, doom and gloom. We don't. 
And that's the difference between them and us and everything else. So, without further ado, we're going to get straight into the morning rant. So, the morning rant has to do with trusting everything you read on the internet. Don't. Um, you know, it, we're getting into an era where something called deep fakes will be taking over a lot of what you see. Uh, if you're not familiar with deep fakes, what that's all about is where you can take uh, an image of a person or a video of a person and you can overlap it and then you can put uh, a voice recording on top of it. And essentially you're having them say whatever you want them to say. There's a pretty good example. There's a, uh, there's a comedian who's able to emulate Obama's voice as a video of that. There's even recently one where they did, and maybe you're not aware of it, but it, one, at one point um, when the uh, Apollo 11 trip was taking place, they were anticipating that it would may, it's very possible that this could crash. Okay. That the Apollo 11 trip to Mars would never take place. So Richard Nixon had um, essentially a speech made up and this was to be delivered in the unlikely event that they never made it to the moon and made it back again. So, um, so someone took that script. They took some old recordings of Richard Nixon. <laughs> not, not the ones he burned. <laughs> no, no, those are gone. Those are gone. No, they took transcripts from, uh, from television and they took images of him and they did this, this amazing, amazing deep fake because they even had like an intro from ABC news and almost like a Walter Cronkite voice in the background. And then, guys going ahead and setting up cameras, which you would have seen prior to the shoot. Now, <clears throat> it never happened, okay? But the deep fake exists to prove that you can't trust everything you see or hear on the Internet. And it has people concerned because now they're trying to figure out if there's a way they can uh, mark deep fakes or quickly identify them or have like, you know, if you watch a video, there'd be like a, a specific repository that you'd go to to verify, hey, this is an authentic video. Yeah, it's been checked. It's the real deal, right? Kind of like Snoops. If you go to Snoops, they'll tell you the straight poop on, you know, stories. So um, so that's that's basically my rant. I mean, you know, the Internet is a wonderful place to go visit. Um, but hard, fast research is so much more of a... Uh, uh, a tactile, uh, physical, touchy thing to do. And I recommend it because if you are trusting every single thing you see on video, then we're screwed. Um, there are some videos of people using like, you have like a, a broken plate and they take the broken plate and they tape it up with tape and they soak it in a, a dish of milk for 24 hours and it magically heals into a solid plate. People, stop, stop, stop. You cannot change the laws of physics, so stop it. Don't look at the video and go, oh, it's possible. Now, if you took, you know, raw garlic and you put it in a jar and you shake it up and it takes the peels off of it, hey, that's something you can believe in. Um, you can watch, you know, you got to use a little bit of common sense. And I know that's on short order in the United States of America, but we need to regain that common sense. We need to look at it with an objective eye and say to myself, wait a minute, can that possibly be right? Am I seeing this for real? And I'm not talking like September 11th and I'm not talking about the space landings. That stuff really happened. Moving on, moving on. <clears throat> but, you know, take a look at what's out there. Make sure you're taking a look at it from an objective eye before you pull out a 45 and start blasting people. Okay, that's all I got to say. <clears throat> all right. Anyway, uh, moving on to things you see on the Internet. So there is a new physics experiment. Gosh, I love physics. Uh, physics is almost like magic anyway. No, really. I'm not kidding. It is. It's like it's like magic. I mean, when it works, it works. I mean, you think about the first time the guys took uh, 
you know, uh, urine, charcoal, and sulfur mixed all together and, and made explosives in China like 10,000 years ago. That was pretty cool. I mean, you did what? You took dried out what? And you did what? And it did what? Okay. So those are fireworks today. Um, <clears throat> so that I, I love science is, is basically, you know, just that it's magic. But anyway, um, so there's a, um, again, going back to trusting things you see on the internet and things you can't trust on the internet. There are rumors, wives tales that if you <clears throat> start with, um, what is it? You, if you, if you, you can heat up, let me get it right. Let me get it right. If you, if you start with cold, let's get this right. Yeah, if you start with cold water and try to heat it, <clears throat> it'll come to a boil faster than hot water will. Okay, so logic would dictate that ain't true. And the great thing is, MythBusters did break through that. They did verify that no, you really got to start with hot water to get hotter water faster. But um, now something that does happen. <clears throat> and is the opposite of that. If you chill down water, if you have cold refrigerator water, and then you put it into a freezer versus taking boiling hot water and putting that into the freezer, the million dollar question is, which one will freeze first? Now, logic would dictate that the water that was refrigerated, that would actually freeze first. And, of course, the hot water would have to cool down to refrigerated temperature and would then have to then come to a point where it, too, could freeze. Actually, that doesn't happen. The really cool thing is, and there was a um, there was an experiment. Now, I will, I'll post it. Uh, it's an article from ScienceNews.org. It's called the, um, I hope I can pronounce this correctly, the Mpemba, M-P-E-M-B-A, Mpemba Effect. And essentially just that, if you start with boiling hot water and you put it into a dish bowl, whatever it is, and you stick it in the freezer, that will actually freeze before the, the cold refrigerated water will. The logic is <clears throat> the, uh, the boiling hot water, <clears throat> excuse me, is all 212 degrees, 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. It's uniform. So the moment it is given an opportunity to cool down, it's going to do it uniformly. Therefore, it can get down to a solid crystalline state faster. Whereas the cold water is cold, but at the bottom of it, it's going to be a little bit colder. At the top, where it's exposed to the air, it's warmer. So now you've got these currents going around. And it's got to get that all to become uniform. So it takes a little bit longer, even though it's colder and closer to uh, closer to uh, 32 Celsius, zero degrees, uh, or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. So uh, it's it's magic. <clears throat> it's um, it's been proven over and over and over again. So that's what that's all about. And I just I just find these stories a little bit interesting because y you read them in the newspaper and you kind of glance over, uh, boiling water, uh, that's interesting. But why? Why does that happen? And that's that's what fascinates me, is the why of things. I like to see what is going on here. Um, speaking of going on here, there's a great video going around, you got to check it out, where I guess during um, uh, Donald Trump's uh, campaign first time around, he had in his office, as you know, he has sitting on his desk, in his New York office, he has a stuffed eagle. Now, I don't know if it's a real eagle. I don't know if it's a, a, I don't know. I don't know. I just know there's an eagle sitting on his desk. It's like an American eagle. I thought it was illegal to have those, but I, I'm not getting into that. But anyway, um, there's a video going around. Apparently, as a promotion, he did a video of him holding an American eagle and, you know, vote for me, I'm Donald Trump, I'm going to make America wonderful again, or something like that, I forget what his tagline is. But anyway, so the, the interesting thing is there are some back videos of essentially where the eagle is trying to attack him. So I thought it was pretty interesting. And speaking of eagles, do you, do you like that segue? Do you like that segue? 
Did you? Was that was that fair? I said speaking of eagles, right? Okay. So what it is is the, it's it's right here in the um, Stafford, Virginia area. It's a story about a uh, local uh, sheriff, Sergeant Anthony McCall, helped a couple of um, two young bald eagles. Apparently, back in May, they had evidently fallen out of their nests during a large storm. Yeah, we get those around here. And they were taken to the Wildlife Center of Virginia and cared for and then released back into the wild. Um, I don't know if you know anything about eagles, but they have some really serious talons, which means you, when you, <laughs> when you go to pick one up and help and move them about, you need to wear these huge, huge gloves. And the gloves actually go all the way up to almost your elbow, and they're leather-lined. And I mean seriously leather lines. So this is the stuff you do if you're like doing welding or something of that nature. Or if you're working at a barbecue and you got to turn the meat by hand, physically, literally by hand, um, and you got to reach in with that serious heat. These gloves can withstand the heat. They can withstand these talons as well in any event. Um, so he is referred to as the Eagle Whisperer. I don't know. Uh, released a couple uh, eagles into the wild. Um yeah, I'll post the story there. But really, I think it's more like uh, eagles are like, get me the Ferengi out of here, baby. But evidently, he's been doing this for the past 13 years, and he's actually helped rescue 19 bald eagles. So my hat goes off to him. My Slade and Mason show hat comes off to him. So there you go. Um, Just a nice story. I mean, you know, you know, we don't get to hear fun stories and happy stories every once in a while. And this is just a fun, happy story. I'm just sharing, okay? Back off, everybody. <sighs> hey, who remembers the movie Demon Seed? Anybody? Anyone? Bueller? It was like 1977 or so. And I watched that. I guess I was babysitting. Oh, man, that dates me. Look at that. Um, I was babysitting for a family up the road. I won't mention names. And... So they had this this weird product called Home Box Office. Oh, well, I'm sorry. They call it HBO now. But that's where it came from. The term was Home Box Office. And the cool thing was they had a subscription for it. And went up to the cable box and you went over to the letter K. And that's where you could watch HBO programs. And they showed all the, you know, the raunchy stuff after 8 o'clock Eastern. And watched a movie about... The Demon Seed. Apparently it made like $2 million in the box office, so it wasn't really a big to-do. And it, it was a little creepy because essentially what was happening was this fellow developed this artificial intelligence computer that ran his house, and he left his wife alone with the computer. Mm -hmm. What could possibly be going on wrong there? Anyway... Uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you could go see the movie, which really isn't worth the time to do, but, uh, long story short, uh, she freaks out, the computer takes her over and, um, how does one put this delicately, inseminates her and, uh, quickly develops a offspring and that's the end of the movie, but lots of people die along the way. Um, kind of creeped me out a little bit, but I'm wondering if, if we're going to be heading that way with artificial intelligence, we'll get to the point where it's like, Hey, you know, that mushy gray area you have, uh, between your ears, we could actually make use of that. If we could gain access to that, maybe we can kind of meld the two together. Now we're headed that way. We are headed that way. As far as an interface. Yes. Uh, you know, Elon Musk is busy building, you know, little transceivers that stick in the back of your head, in your brain, that will be able to immediately send signals or keep track of signals or just, I don't know, get great FM reception. I'm not sure what's going on there, but um, that's that's basically what he's headed for. We're, we are melding with computers rather rapidly. Um, so, you know, something like that, could that happen? Probably not. I mean, you know, creating a DNA string out of, you know, kitchen utensils, eh, a little far stretched. But um, the the premise that that um, first off, we are headed towards a situation where we would be able to eventually upload our memories into, you know, a computer. I think we've talked about this a little bit. 
So if that happens, right, what would keep the artificial intelligence from, you know, going into our memories, looking them over and deciding, oh, I like this guy's entity. And then they take it over, kind of like being possessed, but electronically. I, I, you know, I can actually see that happening. And I, I you know, there's a, I think there's a, uh, I think there's a movie coming. Could be a new Netflix. I don't know. That's going to creep me out a little bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Some good news. Some good news. NASA is to drop racially offensive names. So, um, you, Believe it or not, there are some, I just want to put this, uh, there are some, um, uh, where is it, put this here, I'm trying to find the story, here we go, constellations and nebulae and things like that, named like, you know, uh, the Eskimo Pie Nebula or, <clears throat> you know, uh, the Siamese Twins, whatever. So all that stuff is coming off. So, you know, yes, with the sports teams, now changing names, just that, like the Eskimo Nebula is now going to be referred to as Nebula NGC 2392. Um, actually, that's its original name. Um, so, yeah, they, we're going to be doing a lot A lot of that stuff is coming off. Uh, yeah, the Siamese Twin Galaxies are out. And so they're going to come up with different names. Um, let's see. So we have like the, the Horsehead Nebula. I mean, that's not offensive. It looks like a horse head. So uh, hopefully that we'll be cleaning stuff like that up. I mean, it's great. It's, you know, we're finally recognizing the fact that, you know, we're using terms that are offensive to people. And yeah, let's just, let's just move forward. Let's stop, you know. And then this goes back to, you know, uh, this is a sideline. I get it. But this goes back to uh, when I was doing the census back in 2010. And I didn't really enjoy doing it other than the fact I was getting paid for it because you're putting down things like white, black, Hispanic, you know, um, uh, Alaskan, you know, you're putting down these categories. You are carpent, car, car, what is it? Compartmental. Thanks, Freddie. Compartmentalizing people. Okay. Not really great. Once you put a label on something, that's the problem. You know, I would like it, I would like it if I were, <clears throat> if I were doing interviewing, right? I would like it where <sighs> there'd be like a wall. I couldn't see the person, okay? And I couldn't hear the person, but I would get maybe, I'm thinking like, a, like I'd get like a neutral. So here's how, here's how I'd like to hire people. I would have a conversation with them. They can hear my voice. It's not a big deal. They could see me. Also not a big deal. But I couldn't see them and I couldn't hear them. But as they talk, it goes from voice to text to neutral voice. Okay. This way, I'm not picking up on anything anywhere. I'm not picking up their, you know, like a weird Southern accent or something. I'm just going by content. Okay. So it would be nice if that could happen. Maybe it will happen in the future. That way you have a real neutral, even base. And now we're no longer picking and choosing, you know, uh, favorites, right? So we're just going for people who will do the job best. I think that'd be a great way to hire people. I don't know how I got that on a tangent. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. NASA is changing names. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to the Slade Mason Show where we, we, there's no consistency. In any event, we'll be right back. Goodness for this break. Sadly, however, we will return to the Slade and Mason Show. Today in history, August 9th, 1173. We see the start of the construction of the tower known as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It took over two centuries to complete. Why so long? Just gotta get that angle just right. 1892, Thomas Edison receives a patent for a two-way telegraph. Seems that Morris Code guy was just 
sending stuff out no one's listening to. Well, there you go. 1907. The first Boy Scout encampment concludes at Brown Sea Island in southern England. The smell of burnt marshmallow reigned through the air. 1930. Betty Boop made her cartoon debut in Dizzy Dishes. My oh my, she doesn't look a day over 21. 1944, the United States Forest Service releases posters featuring Smokey Bear for the very first time. This was not their first incarnation of a woodland creature preventing fires. The earlier ones didn't work. They had uh, Firehead the Ferret, Sparky the Salmon, and uh, Matchhead Mike that crazy squirrel. And finally, 1999. Russian President Boris Yeltsin fires his Prime Minister, Sergei Stepanfin, and for the fourth time, fires his entire cabinet. What's this guy think he is, the head of Russia or something? Oh, he is that. Never mind, never mind. I'm Dan Mason, and that's August 9th. Just when you thought it was safe to come back, a movie so frightening. You'll need to wear the pens. Featuring screams by Jamie Lee Curtis. This will scare you to death. This was no shark attack. This was a boat. You've got to clear the beach. Are you insane? It's, it's, it's Christmas season. No, 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 no. The beach stays open. You just figure out that little boat problem that you have there. Timmy, come out of the water. I don't want you in there right now. There might be a boat. But Mom! No, but Mom. You come out of that water. God damn it, will you all please listen to me? I remember back in 1968, there was once a boat with an oar as long as my arm. I, I'm sorry, I meant, I meant the, the oar was as wide, as wide as my arm. Oh, yeah, yeah, why is your, uh, yeah, why is your arm? Sure, sure, sure. Explosion scenes directed by Michael Bay. I think we're gonna need a bigger beach. Coming soon to a theater near you. Presented by Pentagon Pictures and Slate Co. Productions. In part by Dewey Jim and Hal. The next big thriller, The Boat. This film is not yet rated. <laughs> Is less expensive than diamonds. Rice is less expensive than pearls. You'd rather have rice than pearls. Rice is less expensive than mink or sable. But I'm unable to get someone to throw rice at me. He wants to get married. Won't someone throw rice at me? Won't someone throw rice at me? How awfully nice to be bombarded by shoes, old shoes, and rice. rice, rice, rice. Don't cost as much as a caddy. Rice. rice, rice, rice. rice. Don't cost as much as a yacht. They certainly cost a lot. Right. Don't cost as much as a platinum choker. Why won't some joker throw a teaspoonful of rice at me? He wants to get married. Won't someone throw rice at me? Won't someone throw rice? At me, how awfully nice to be bombarded by shoes, old shoes, and rice. 
is not as rare as a Rembrandt. You'd rather have a wedding picture. Rice rice. is not as rare as perfume. She only wants love in bloom. Rice is not as rare as a scene by Van Gogh. Why won't some man go for a quarter's worth of rice for me? She wants to get. I want to get. Won't someone throw rice? Sadly, we must now return you to the Slade and Mason Show. No, that's not the one I'm just going to get. All right, that was, of course, Rice, Rice, Rice. Rice Soda, Kitty White doing with Hugo Perete and his orchestra uh, from 1955. We are going to get dinged on that one. So why did I play that song? Well, today is, of course, something to do with Rice or Kitty White or Hugo Peretti or orchestras. It actually is rice. Uh, Today is National Rice Pudding Day. And if you're not familiar with what rice pudding is... Let's start with this. So you make, I actually, I think I'll probably make some today. I love rice pudding. So what you do is you start with making regular white rice and then you make a, um, throw some raisins in because I love the raisins. Oh my gosh. Just some raisins in there as you're chewing along and then you get that little pop of sweetness. Mm, 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 mm. And it's gotta be the, it's gotta be the dark raisins. You can't do the light raisins, but um, and then what you're doing is you're making a custard of sorts. It's a runny kind of stiff, kind of sugary, sweet, delicious, kind of nasty, gross. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> so that's what you're going to do. And a lot of people don't like rice pudding. It's a textural thing for them, I believe, because essentially it's like having a mouthful of maggots in your mouth. And you get that occasional brown pop of like sweetness that could be, I don't know, a dead fly or something of that nature. And us, you know, a lot of diners are notorious for having, <laughs> you know, you, you get the rice pudding, go, oh, I really like the rice pudding with the raisins in there. And they go, we didn't put any raisins in there. <laughs> so those are like flies or whatever. And don't forget the cinnamon. You got to put cinnamon in there right on the top of the surface. It's, it's great. It's great. And, you can have it warm, like if it's fresh laid. Oh, man, warm rice pudding. Or you can have it chilled down, and then you scoop it up like ice cream. It gets nice and firm. Um, that's that's how that goes. The, um, the oh, before I forget, before I forget, I just want to bring something to your attention. Speaking of nature and flies and things like that, I am actually growing. I don't know if that's the right word I'm looking for. I'm taking care of. That's a better word for it. Um, some polywogs. Yeah. So on my walks, um, I come across this little tiny elongated puddle um, that maybe holds about 50 gallons of water. And it's rainwater. And each summer, the toads get a little frisky and they start singing to each other. You never find a love like mine. And then the, uh, the, the boy girls and the... And the and the and the boys and the girl uh, toads get together, and the boys are hanging out with the girls, and the girls are hanging out with the boys, and then the girls go ahead and put their eggs into this water, this standing water, and then the boys go ahead and put their manliness on top. That's what I'm going after anyway. So a bunch of polywogs, and what I've noticed is this one thing. It's by the side of the road. It just again, it's about fifty-five gallons worth of water. But it dries out, and then they got to start the whole process over again. So what I've done is I've rescued just a handful of them, and just to see if I can kind of get them to come up to speed and get older, and you know have a happier life. And and then there's a there's a retention pond back in our uh, past my yard. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in there once they get a little bit larger, 
and we'll go from there. Hey, uh, before I get too far ahead, this section of the Slade and Mason show is brought to you by I See Something Icy. My buddy Sheila Keenan has this beautiful, big, huge truck. It's a food truck, and she's got these two large Italian uh, ice shavers. And if you're not familiar with what this is, uh, the Italian style is just that they can scrape it off the 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 ice block. It's an ice block. It's kept frozen. And it creates, it's almost like ice cream. It's that smooth. And she puts her flavorings on top. You can have tropical fruit flavors. You can have just lemon or lime. And you can have the traditionals, you know, the cherry flavors. I like the pina colada because that's the way I roll. Um, so they're all over the place. Uh, still got some time left on the books. Uh, give them a call at 804-617-8827. That's 804-617-8827. 804-617-8827. Really great for birthday parties, corporate events, fundraisers, lots of great things. Um, they're usually down in Ladysmith at Advance Auto Parts, usually there, or King George County, um, uh, uh, what they call it, the, uh, you know, the thing with the farmer's market. That's what I'm looking for. So they're there on the weekends. Give them a call. See where they're at. 804-617-8827. You can check them out online. They're at I see something. That's I see something. Yeah, let me try that again. I see something. I see dot com. So it's I C E Y S O M E T H I N I C E Y dot com. And again, 804-617-8827. Again, birthday parties, corporate events, fundraisers, lots of great reasons to give them a call and get them to come to your place. And tell them Dan Mason sent you from the Slade and Mason Show. Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And, and this, this is, is the Slade, Slade and Mason, Mason Show. Show. Okay, so now, more science news. Oh, man. Well, this is kind of a kind of a fun little nosebleed here. That Nosebleed? Where did it come from? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Last Monday was the splashdown of the Dragon Capsule. If you don't know what this is, you have been living under a rock. Elon Musk's business, SpaceX, has been going full throttle, no no, no pun intended, on getting man back into space. you got to think about this. It's been 2011 since anybody of a, a, any humanoid, if you will, has launched from the United States into space of any type, shape, form, whatever. If they want to go into space, they have to go to Russia. And Russia will launch them from a Soyuz uh, rocket. And it's basically uh, uh, an out-of-control uh, diesel train <laughs> going down uh, into space at, at an alarming rate. Anyway, so every all, all the men and women who have made their way to space stations since almost a decade since we retired the shuttle program have been using Russian um, systems. So now we have SpaceX. And if you've not seen the launch or if you've not seen the landing, you have got to go check this out. We are, it, it's, it's like a, it's like a scene out of Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001. The, the uniforms are nice and clean you can see around and start. it's it's like this is what you want to make when you make an outfit this is what a rocket should look like when you want to make a rocket this is what the the instrument panel now you remember back like in the 60s and 70s when you know the apollo launch and what have you and you can even go to some museums and sit inside of one of these capsules and they have this control panel with thousands and thousands of buttons and switches and dials and gauges and you're like are you kidding me? Is this for real? No, 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 no. So what Elon Musk did was he had like five or six of these uh, panels, in, and they were touchscreen. And all you had to do was touch. And he want to see, oh, you see the fuel's doing? Hit the button for fuel. You want to see the rockets in them? Press that button. You want to see the temperature in the sample? That's it. So very sleek. So a lot, the cabin is not filled up with... with um, buttons and dials and gauges and goofy things like that. <clears throat> it's all touchscreen and it's beautiful. And they sit in basic luxury in these, these seats that are actually molded directly to their bodies. So they're exactly, you know, every bulge and, you know, whatever is right there in their shape. Um, beautiful, beautiful launch, beautiful, beautiful launch. 
and uh, and they they docked at the space station and the one fellow uh uh bob i think it was he's the the, the first captain he says i i didn't it was so soft i didn't even realize we actually launched uh, latched so they did a beautiful job of that um he did bump his head when he went into the space station that was funny it was like a scene from the uh, Star Wars. I don't know if you guys remember that one scene with the stormtroopers come by and he boom, bopped his head. That's still in the movie. That's great. I love that that's still there. Um, uh, what does I can say here? So, and then the landing, just as beautiful. Uh, you have the first parachutes that come out. They kind of slow things down. And then the second set of three, they come out as well and slow the capsule down to about, what they say, like a seven or 11 miles an hour. So it hit the ocean at 7 to 11 miles an hour. They say it's kind of like someone getting bumped in, you know, when you're in a grocery store or a grocery uh, parking lot and someone backs into you from, like, the space behind you. It's about, um, it feels like that. Now, what I was upset about was the fact that as they landed, a bunch of civilian boats circled around them. Idiots. Listen. This is something coming in from space. Lots of weird chemicals are being used, okay? And, and, and to that point, when the rescue boat came out to them, they had to essentially circle the capsule several times to make sure that all the chemicals that were being used had already vented out. There are um, different things used to, you know, keep it stabilized. There are chemicals used to propel and get the the parachutes out from the capsule a lot of things are going on a lot of different gases and chemicals and things like that and you're coming flying up on this thing you could die you could die so they figured this one out and they're saying okay we're not going to do this like this next time first off i don't think they're going to publicize where they're going to land because i think that's what happened and sure as donuts they landed within it looked like uh 150 yards of their target. It was absolutely beautiful. So yeah, um, that is, that's the big news. Um, launches can take place here in the United States and for a fraction of the price that, uh, was done in Russia, you know, no offense to Russia. Got it. You know, your, your rockets are great. They're reliable. No one's been ill and gotten hurt and anything like that, which is great recently that we're aware of. So, uh, yeah, yeah, about that. Now, another interesting thing. How much time do we have left here? We're a good amount of time. All right. So another thing that's been going on is, and I always have a problem pronouncing his name, Jeff Bezos. I think I got right. I got that right. And Elon Musk. These guys want to take over the world. Not, not this one. Not that one. Not, we've already done that one. They want to take over that one and that one. Jeff wants the moon. Elon wants Mars. I mean, that's the way it goes. And they both have the same problem. You are going to be in a non-atmosphere area. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be essentially bombarded with radioactive material coming from the sun that's going to cook the DNA unless you guys figure out a way to keep that from happening. That's going to be one of the biggest problems of being on the moon or being on Mars. That and the fact that there's no decent gravity. Uh, the moon is what, one sixth and Mars is like one half or something like that. I'm using broad numbers here. You've got a problem because now if you're not, gravity isn't, um, so gravity is just that. It's, 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 it's the attraction of objects towards other objects. Okay, you with me? It isn't being spun in a centrifuge to get the same effect. I mean, yeah, you can go in a big, huge, you know, big carnival thing. Remember, I don't know if you remember, guys remember this thing. It's this big, huge wheel, and it spins, and then it tips up on its side, and you're sucked up against the wall, okay? That's centrifugal force. That's you're just flinging yourself up against it. So these uh, uh, activities where they, they, you know, you see the, the moonwalk or, again, Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001, where they're walking the artificial gravity is due to the fact they're being flung in that direction. So the blood is being actually pushed 
down towards her feet. So something very different happens when you're flinging something to create gravity as opposed to gravity. So that's going to be a problem on both Mars and the moon. Okay, that's another problem. So now you've got these weird things happening to people's bodies. Now, there are these iron, iron or something like that on Mars that are deadly poisonous. The whole surface of Mars is absolutely deadly poisonous to humans. So now you've got a human being on the planet. They're walking around, they're kicking up dirt, and now they have to go essentially into a clean room and get this all scrubbed off their outside uniform. And then they have to open up all their, you know, handholds and things like that. Then that all has to be scrubbed. And then they take their clothes off. And then that has to be scrubbed. And then they stand there naked. They kind of got to be scrubbed. So it's a lot of work. And now, mind you, and you're also, like, got no gravity, decent gravity to deal with. You got the radiation bombardment. So these are, like, huge, huge problems. I think we figured out how to get there. I mean, we have, it looks like Elon Musk has the, uh, the, 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 the rocket power to get us to Mars. It's the now, once we get there, how are we going to live there safely? Now, some have talked about, and this is pretty interesting is living in caves underground on Mars and same thing for the moon or, or better yet be on the far side of the moon all the time. So you're away from the bombardment of, um, of the sun. The sun is, it's a star, man. It's it's kicking out some serious, you know, heat. But, uh, hey, speaking of heat and things that are hot, there are foods, but there aren't foods that are hot. Where am I going with this one? Um, I'm just going to jump right into this horrible segue. Uh, England. Apparently, there's a fellow who's complaining about things that are not available in, the, uh, in England that are available in the United States that he misses. So... Here is his list. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10. There's 10 items. Here we go. Uh, number one uh, that he misses is cheese popcorn. Apparently in England, they don't have cheese flavored popcorn. They've got salted popcorn, no butter, and they have salted with sugar, no butter. Um, he's tried all the different stores. The only way he can get the cheese popcorn is buying imported, you know, uh, bagged popcorn um number two is canned cranberry sauce what yuck who cares moving on uh the third one nabisco saltines in england theirs are more like biscuits their 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 crackers are more like biscuits nabisco you you know you just bite down and just crumbles into into a thing so i i can i can get that uh box macaroni and cheese again no great loss why, look, you are in, you are in Cheese Central. Why don't you make your own, man? Big whiny baby. Um, Tex-Mex food. There is no Tex-Mex food to speak of in England. Uh, maybe Taco Bell, but as far as going to like a local Tex-Mex place, a Pancho Villa, apparently it's just not there. Make your own. Pumpkin pies. He said during the uh, holiday seasons, he was looking forward to having pumpkin pie. They don't have them. He doesn't know what to do about it. He's very upset. Uh, again, why don't you do like a sweet potato pie? They're much better. Uh, regular, good old-fashioned coffee. Everything they have apparently is espresso or double vente or something like that. You just can't get a regular cup of coffee. I, maybe things are changing, but I thought they could. But anyway, that's what this fellow is saying. Mini donuts. Uh, we're talking like those Entenmann's little tiny jobbers are like two inches across, it just just not to pop in your mouth and get the dust all over the front of your shirt. And you're like, oh, what is that flower stuff? Uh, he says they just don't have those in England. Um, the other one, number nine, is uh, this guy's got some issues. Home style chunky mashed potatoes. He says what they do is they usually whip them into an absolute paste and he ain't, he ain't having it. So, again, why don't you go get yourself some potatoes and make them yourself? You're such a whiner. Um, and the last item, the biggest item that he is upset about, and, I, dude, get over this one. He says, uh, he says Oreo cookies. He says, first off, they're a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. 
in England, and they don't have like the other flavors, like chocolate chip cookie, mint, lemon, birthday cake, and I'm thinking, good. <laughs> That's disgusting anyway. Who wants that stuff? Oh, my gosh. Um, so, actually, let's do this because we are starting to run out a little bit of time here. Let's do, we'll go to this page. We'll bring this up a little bit. Work with me. Let's do there and press the button. There we go. All right. So, one of the reasons we are the fattest nation on the planet. All right. There we go here. Um, so, uh, Nabisco is announcing they have released a new debut of crisp crisp cheese crisps cheese crisps to, uh two tasty flavors in one package so you can open up both sides eat them up and get twice as bad there we go um let me go to this one i gotta get this button right eat it eat it eat it eat it uh, eat it why is my computer not working working with you guys hold on all right. Um, let's see. We have Nabisco. Let's see. We got the Kellogg's earnings. Apparently, people are eating more food at home, so they are creating new uh, at-home quick and easy dishes that you can just park into your microwave and get going there. Uh, Hershey's reveals that they have the brand new lineup of Halloween candy that's coming out in July. July, August, September, October, Jiminy Crickets. Three months of eating Halloween candy just in time. And coming up this week is um, Teacher Appreciation Month week, excuse me. So Krispy Kreme is offering free donuts to teachers. Yay! So you can have yourself as much of those as you want. And uh, finally, Pepperidge Farm. Pepperidge Farm, Pepperidge Farm members. They are going to have the pumpkin spice mulatto cookies <laughs> just in time for the the holiday seasons in uh, uh, in in August. So there you go. That is the reason we are the fattest nation in the world. All right. Thanks. Sorry. Sorry, Weird Al. Um, hey, J so uh, as you know, JD is not here. He usually does that spot and does a much better job of it than I do. And I apologize. I'm just trying to. Trying to make your lives a little interesting for about an hour. Uh, but I was chit-chatting with a listener who I said, you know, I was saying, well, are you, are you still enjoying the program? And he says, well, it's kind of like, you know, you guys are like uh, Simon and Garfunkel and, um, and you're Garfunkel. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Like, why can't I be Paul Simon? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Paul Simon had a successful career without without Art Carfunkel. Art Carfunkel. Art Carfunkel. I mean, yeah, I, really, I, I like a joke. But anyway, you know, he, he got approached by Hollywood. He looked pretty. And they said, oh, man, we could put him on film. We could make a million dollars. Yeah. Let's get a hold of Art Carfunkel. Why, come here. I want to talk to you for just a second here. Uh, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> We're going to make you a star, son. That's so what we're going to do. Yeah, just sign this contract here. And what? Paul? No, 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 no. We don't want him. Too short. No, we like you. Blonde hair, blue eyes. Can you... Come on, just sign this contract. <laughs> we're going to make you a star. And that's what happened. Art Garfunkel slipped away. And as you know, there was a big feud between the two of them. But uh, Paul Simon, you know, he survived. He did quite well. A lot of albums released. And eventually, you know, uh, they got back together. They were best of friends again. They did that thing in Central Park, yada, yada, yada. So I don't know. That's, that's, um, that's, that's a warm and fuzzy, I guess. But uh, um, let's see. What else do I want to talk to you guys about here? Oh, there is a new study that was done. And they did on the, on the, on the electron scan microscope level. Wanted to find out why razors dull over time. I know you guys are sitting there going, wait, 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 wait. apparently what happens is, as you know, each hair on your face, these, these little hairs right here, they are as strong as a copper wire. 
Yeah. So when you are taking a, a, a steel blade and coming across and cutting that, what happens? Apparently what is happening is even soft, what we consider soft hairs, will actually destroy the blade because it's, on, again, on the, on, the, on the electron scan microscope, you can see little tiny chips of metal being chipped away at the surface of the blade, which, of course, would then dull the blade, almost making it like a serrated knife, which is not good because, really, who wants a serrated knife? You want something nice and smooth. So if you're interested, I will post that there. Hey, I'm posting all the links we have here, okay? All, everything's going to be posted here. Um, even the one that's, we're going to talk about, oh, a couple of things we've got. To, there's only a couple moments left here. There's a sunspot head our way. So, uh, make sure you charge your phone batteries because <laughs> we're almost done for, um, the, uh, uh, they recently used, uh, the Hubble telescope. Yeah. As a, um, a, a means of looking, let me get this right. So the, we went into a solar eclipse, a, a moon eclipse, I guess it's referred to. Basically what happens is the earth is actually blocking the moon's light from the, the sun can't get through. And then they used the telescope to look to see if they can identify through Hubble that we have an atmosphere looking at the, uh, the way it comes off because it, potentially they can search for habitable planets that have an, an ozone layer like we do. We do, you know, I'm just saying we, we have an atmosphere. I mean, it's not really great or anything, but that there. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at that and I will post that story there in a dish. Oh man. All right. Well, I guess those stories will have to wait for next week. Well, there's the music boys and girls. That's going to do us for yet another week of the Slade and Mason show. JD, be well, be kind, be kind to each other. You guys have a great day. It's Sunday. Go out and enjoy the beautifulness of the beautifulness of it. And uh, God willing, we'll see you guys next week. Bye, y'all. You know the drill. So if you're enjoying the Slade and Mason show and you want to see more episodes, make sure you hit the subscribe button down yonder and hit the bell. There you go. See you next week. Bye.